So here now, uh, as we said, in a story exclusive tonight, is Patrick Byrne, the now former CEO of Overstock.com. Patrick, thank you very much uh, for being with us tonight to talk about well, your it's, story. It's an honor to be on. There was some confusion wrapped up in that lead you just heard, folks, okay. but we'll unscramble it. All right, well, yeah, we'll unscramble it uh, mm -hmm. to be sure. So, you know, first of all, I know that you, obviously you left your company today. It's a company that you built through your own, you know, sweat and grit over all of those years. Very successful business. Um, your thoughts quickly about the company. Company is in a great position. We have two sides to it. We have the retail business. We also have a network of blockchain companies that I think can change the world. Mm -hmm. And for example, with something called, if you're into blockchain, there's like a killer app called Security Tokens. We got a company yeah. called T0 that is leading that. We have all these great blockchain companies and our retail business we turned to positive in the black uh, EBITDA in the second quarter. So everything's in a great okay. situation. I have to get away from the retail company based on what I think is going on. Okay, so, right. so obviously you stepped away from your company, you say for the good of the company and the good of yes. the country. You say that you got tangled up in the deep state investigation into uh, President Trump. Tell me, how, how did all of this start? Let me give you the bottom line up front. So listen, I'm a, I'm a hippie. I'm a, I have nothing to do with the feds. I'm a flag-waving hippie. For, twice in my life I, hel I had the honor of helping them. A friend of mine named Brian Williams was murdered. 17 years ago, I helped them bring the, the murder to justice, and I helped them fight Wall Street about 12 years ago. I was kind of a one-man Occupy Wall Street in 05, 06. The Fed showed up, and it was my honor to help them take down a couple okay. hundred people on Wall Street. So that's that. Let me jump to the bottom line, and this I've learned is the quickest way to explain it. In 2015, 2016, they got back in touch with me to, for the third time, and it was... Uh, I was given some fishy orders, and I carried them out thinking I, in 2015, 2016, thinking I was conducting law enforcement. Let me emphasize, don't say the FBI. The FBI is barely involved in this. It's all the top. Uh, the, the men in black, as I called them, showed up and asked for this third favor. And I, and, well, anyway, I'm not going to go into the details right now, but uh, I didn't know who sent the orders, but I did them. La they seemed fishy last summer watching television. And here's the punchline. Here's the punchline, people. Last summer watching television and some congressional hearings, I figured out where those orders came from. They gave him a guy named Peter Strzok. And Bill Trista, Carlin, McCabe, Comey. That was who sent the orders. Uh, and well, you're naming a bunch of FBI people there. Well, the, the Peter Strzok, and it has been confirmed to me that my instructions came from Peter Strzok, that the people who carried me orders were coming and okay. taking it on behalf. That's been so, confirmed. So, you had, so helped, was, you had helped the government a couple of times. They reached out to you. What did they ask you to do? Uh, I don't want to go into the nitty-gritty right now. Uh, well, I, the nitty-gritty, I, I can tell you the main event, and I feel terrible. I've been watching for three years, and mm -hmm. our country's coming apart, and people are killing each other. And I finally went to see Buffett. And Buffett, my Buffett and I, Buffett's kind of my rabbi, I call him. And, uh, he's, since I was, and he said, Patrick, you have to come forward. And I said, you know, it's going to make some feds fur furious at me. Their heads are going to explode. And he said, you let feds do their job. You're a citizen. You got your job. You're coming to the public. Uh, here's what it is. This was all political espionage conducted against Hillary Clinton, Rubio, Cruz, and Trump. This is not a theory of mine, some political theory. I was in the room when it happened, in a way. I mean, not in a way. I, I was part of it. Uh, I didn't know, I knew I had some of the pieces. I thought I had the pieces of something much bigger. Last summer, as stuff bubbled into the news, thanks to good journalists such as yourself, uh, I started realizing I had these very important missing pieces. I actually started coming trying to help then, but I had to wait until there was a r return to rule of law in our country. And I've, li I've lived in places where there, and that took waiting until Bill Barr got, got installed. And then I, gen I don't know the guy, uh, I never shaken his hand or anything, but only then did I trust things enough. And I went to the Department of Justice and, and started you told explaining. Them what you knew. Um, right yeah, um, you know, it, it, and it's it's my understanding that that you know I should just point this out because some people might be listening and saying you know well how credible is this and you know we we did some asking around and you know we have basically had 
the indications that you know that there's every reason to believe that what you that your, your story is indeed uh, credible. So um, uh, yeah, it, I'm not in the I, I'm not in the convincing business. I'm yeah, in the no, business I, 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 I hear you. Door, and, and obviously, open, but, but let me go back to the to the basics because this is what everybody's Cotton, saying at home. This is what everyone's saying at home. What did they tell you to do? What did they ask you to do, Patrick? Uh, there was well some of it. Uh, involved this young lady, Maria Butina, uh, who came here. Uh, so, uh, so some of it involved her. Okay. Some of it involves setting up Hillary Clinton uh, for what looked like in uh, looked like law enforcement but was actually setting her up to be blackmailed. Uh, I helped set uh, them set up Hillary Clinton to be blackmailed. What was the nature Didn't of the blackmail? Can't go into it. And so I've already, I'm sure there's a bunch of people in Washington who are going to rip me apart. Uh, and I've actually been warned. I was warned last October if I, if, from a friendly person, Patrick, if you come forward, this entire mm -hmm. town of Washington is going to destroy you. It's going to well, turn you into dust. And, you know, I give you a lot of credit because I know that you said that you did some soul searching uh, over the summer and you, you know, talked to good friends and you mentioned one of them a moment ago. Um, what was the what was the nature of your relationship with Maria Boutin? Did, did she reach out to you or did you reach out to her? And, and she, how involved were you? Did you have an affair with her for three years or what was the nature of your relationship? Uh, have you seen the video? I bet you've played it where Candidate Trump is at a conference and yes. this young girl stands up and asks question. her a question. Sure. If you go and look up that conference, which was a 2015 uh, conference in Las Vegas, on, uh, I'm a small L libertarian, a small R Republican. I don't even identify as a Republican. Uh, I'm a small, I, but I get asked to speak at sort of freedom oriented conferences like that, mm -hmm. and I did. And I was at that conference, and after I spoke, she actually came up to me and talked about guns. Well, and some gun rights thing in Florida, and the first time I brushed her off, I'm not into guns. I, you know, I, I'm not, everybody should have one, but I, I'm not into them. I'm, I don't fetishize them or anything like Republicans, but I often do. But then she came up the next day and said, listen, I'm really here. Look, I don't, I'm really here. I've been sent from Russia to make contact with you. And there's some people in Russia who want to talk to you. They know about you and your relationship with Milton Friedman. Believe it or not, there are people like this in Russia. There are liberals. And we shared this whole story. I don't want to get into it here. I'll put it up on a website called Deep Capture, which is where I used mm -hmm. to write to the world. But I'll, I'll go into all the, I don't want to go into where in the doll did you touch her stuff. Uh, we, had, we had an intellectual relationship. I was given a green light to meet her again. She turned that into a physical relationship. I don't mean to, you know, not that I'm <laughs> unwitting, but, or unwilling. But uh, so we, we dated for about six months. I was trying to enter her in to some senior foreign policy thinkers. I, because of some things I used to do involving law enforcement and taking down Wall Street, I, have a, I used to have a very low level security clearance. Uh, and when you get that, you sign a piece of paper that says when a gal comes up to you from Russia and says, listen, uh, I've been sent here to make contact mm -hmm. with you and we want to take you to Moscow and want you to speak on Bitcoin and speak on liberalism at the central bank and then we want other people. You have to report that. I reported that, and so that to my clearance authority, and which is kind of a good, you know, I talked about once every three years or something like that happened. And before I know it, the men in black are back in, in my life, and I, I was trying to encourage her to have a relationship. And she wanted to be a back channel for peace, and I could have opened some doors, but I didn't want to do that until I had, until I had some green light. And after uh, a couple months, some, anyway, I, don't, uh, I was given the green light. That turned romantic. I was bothered. I'll tell you something that, I mean, I'll tell you some really deep stuff. I was, by, I was two thirds judging it as an opportunity for something good, something to move the ball of peace down the field a bit. Mm -hmm. One third that it was a risk. As those, no, she, I know she was dating or living with some, some Republican bigwigs and stuff. So my idea, I just said, I'm, I'm a 56 year old bachelor. I said, you just, every six weeks or so, when you want to see someplace, give me a call and we'll meet there. Uh, but I was trying to yent to her in and maybe something peaceful could happen. But I had sort of a third, uh, maybe two thirds I was positive, one third, this is quite a risk. And especially over those, from July of 2015 to March of 2016, as uh, I, as she, she, uh, 
she clearly was swanking around more and more in big shot Republican circles, mm -hmm. including, including uh, people like Don Jr. I was telling her that the men in black about all those meetings before she had them. They knew about her the day she landed. They knew about every one of these meetings she had. They knew that at one point she was going off to have a meeting with Don Jr. I don't know. And listen, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a never Trumper. I'm, I have this. He won. He won fair and square. And that's. So do you think but, that so, she was set up by the men in black to approach uh, people in the Trump administration? Is that a possibility? A hundred percent. They knew that she was trying to approach, and her instructions were to approach. To, she had to build a contact with anyone in the Hillary campaign, Rubio, Cruz, or Trump. And they knew that because she told me, and I let them know. They let uh, it all happen. I could have told you. In December of 2015, I had a suspicion forming in my mind. It was really quite strange because she had initially checked off. She she doesn't like she's Democrat. She's much more of a Republican or much more of a of a small L liberal. She's a Milton Friedman fan. I'm a Milton Friedman guy. So, um, so once she had checked off having met somebody in Clinton's circle, I don't know who, and she told she was telling me all this. She was just going to focus on Cruz, Rubio, and Trump. At that point, the interest of, in the United States government in doing anything about this went to zero. It became like this, even to the point I was telling them things like, look, she's telling me that in a matter of weeks, she's going to be at some conference of, of conservatives, and Donald Trump is going to be taken down and out the back door of his hotel and be taken to meet her and this and that. What do you want me to do? Can I, uh, let me take her off for a trip and uh, whisk her away to the Bahamas? Yeah. Or what, and they said, no, we're going to let it all happen. Uh huh. Hundred percent. So, do you believe that? that about, do you believe that they that she was working for them for the for these uh, men in suits in the United States, or that she was working for no. the Russian government or some combination? No, 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 I'm not going into that. I'm not going into that. It's not. She wasn't working for the men in suits here. Listen, here's the other main event. It, it's horrible to even say the initials FBI involved in this. It wasn't the FBI. The FBI got hijacked from the top. It's the top. It's entirely Well, you talked the top. about Comey. You talked about Brennan Clapper. So you're talking about the CIA. I'm. Uh, I'm talking about. I'm. I'm. I have named. Well, I've said there's three officials whose names were used with me. X, Y, and Z. I'm not going to stay on your show. The feds all have this. I'm sorry. The legitimate feds all have this as of April. Mm -hmm. There were three names used at the uh, three senior officials. Right. They were behind all of this. And the FBI was out of it. The FBI, they delivered the message. And let me tell you, oh, and then there was another period where they, so then they told me to break up with her. Yeah. I was stage four or stuff. They came back, and this time they specifically said, we need you to conduct a romantic, rekindle your romantic relationship, and the orders are coming from X, Y, and Z. And they felt horrible. I want to be clear, these are men and women of honor, and I think those are illegal orders. And I, they made very clear to me, you do not have to take these, you do not have to help. I think they didn't want me to, but they felt terrible. So when, you, when you say all the way up, are you talking, what, what do you mean? The White House? The CIA? I think. Or are you, I you're talking about names. entities that were separate from these. Like when you say it wasn't the FBI, but you say it was Peter Strzok, are you sort of carving him out as being part of a separate operation, separate from the FBI? No, no, no. I'm just, uh, forget Strzok for a moment. I, the X, Y, and Z are uh, actual human beings whose names you know uh, who were in the Obama administration. Uh, guys like Strzok and stuff are the errand boys. They're the clerks who, who sent the messages for some federal agents. Is it John Brennan? Thing. Is it James uh, Clapper? Is it General Barr, General Barr has that information, and okay. I think, I think I'm, they're already, I'm sure, furious. I've way overstepped okay. the lines. All right, let, let, I understand, uh, and, and I don't want you to. They'll reveal it to you. Yeah, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm asking questions because that, that's, that's my job, and you can you know, answer yeah. them you know, to whatever Fair extent enough. you feel comfortable, and I understand that. But you know, when you said that you realized last summer that it was Peter Strzok that had contacted you, and you know, you've, you've talked about you know, having discussions about Maria Butina. What you said, that something, did something make you uncomfortable that he asked you to do? And is that why you, you know, sort of said, uh -uh, well, maybe I'm, I'm out? Uh, no, it didn't work that way. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I will write up an explanation all of this and people can read it so it's yep. clear. But it's, the, it was, what was making me uncomfortable was two things. That I was, t you know, I had originally said, hey, this is two thirds an opportunity and something. She's very well connected in Russia. Let me introduce her to some people in our, in our foreign policy think tank establishment, and would that be okay? 
uh, one third, you know, like she wanted to talk about John Stuart Mill and, and Erasmus and the Greeks. I mean, she's a real intellectual. But I had this, this concern about the, the risk that there was some, some mischief afoot. And she was here doing what, well, as those first six months wore on, that, that risk profile shifted. And she stopped talking so much about John Stuart Mill and John Rawls and Milton Friedman as she started talking about all these Republican bigwigs she's swanking around with. I could have told you, I'm looking for a, a prop, I could have told you in December of 2015, I was forming this thought, it's starting to seem what they're doing, mm -hmm. is now that they know she's here just swimming around with Republicans, it's starting to seem that what they're doing is letting this can-o scandal mm -hmm. develop on the Republicans, and someday they're going to pick it up and shake it, mm -hmm. crack it, and spray it on the Republicans. <laughs> nah, no way. No way would James Comey, no way would President Obama ever do something like that. Well, that's literally what, uh, and I'm not saying President Obama was involved. Don't make any assumptions about who X, Y, and Z are. Those are all up to the DOJ involved. I'm ho I, uh, but I literally, ha I could have told you in December 2015, which I will note is seven months before the official start of the investigation, right. that I had already picked up. I was already hypothesizing this is starting to seem like they're just deliberately letting this grenade develop on the Republicans, are they just going to pull the pin on it someday? I hear you. I could, you know. It, 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 was there anything that you witnessed that, you know, or were you ever told to, to stand down, you know, to, to, to back off? Is, is that what you were referring to a little while ago, or was that something different? No, in, uh, in March of 2016, I was, uh, she asked me over to Russia to give a speech. Her goal was to get me to Moscow to give a talk at the Central Bank on Bitcoin and liberalism, and then to take me to a resort in the Altai Mountains that was going to be shut down for three days so that 40 to 45 people would get together from the oligarchs and the governments and, we're, and their liberals, and we're going to spend three days talking about liberalism and also, anyway, this, is, this was the offer, and they, she had been sent by them to get me to come back and do this. Yeah. When she asked me in March to come over again, she was saying, speak in St. Petersburg, on blockchain, and I think that we can change the world and eliminate poverty and stuff with blockchain. Come speak, Putin is gonna be there, it's been arranged, you're gonna have 60 minutes alone with Putin, and this will be great. At that point, I was told, break up with her, and they and get her out mm -hmm. of your life, and I worked on something else involving corruption of a federal official. Okay. When that, what, okay. No, go ahead, when that. Sorry. When that matter involving the, the corruption of a federal official was complete, it ended in an odd way that sounded fishy. It ended in an odd way that was very fishy. And again, the details are all in the Department of Justice. And this, uh, but it was involved in a corruption of a federal official, and it ended in a way that smelled like skunk. At which point, when they came back around July 1st mm -hmm. of 2016, which is to say a few weeks before the Republican convention, right. but about, time, about the time that Trump became the Nominee. Presumptive, not, presumptive nominee, yeah. not nominee, but uh, they came back and said, boy, did we make a mistake. Russia, 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 Russia. We, we need to do it. And I want to be clear, they said this. They said the United States never, ever asked this to somebody, never asked a citizen to conduct a romantic relationship in order to get information. This is such a national security emergency. We need to ask you to do this if you're willing. And the orders come from X, Y, and Z. We want to be clear, Patrick. You are absolutely in your rights to refuse this. You have no obligation to. We never, in all our careers, we've never heard of an American citizen being asked to sleep with someone in order to get information and such. I want to be clear about something. And so then I conducted for the following seven months, I, to all intents and purposes, conducted another romance. That entire time I was lying to the federal government. I put on a show, I was flying her, wanting and dying her. That second time I spent time with her, I created the impression deliberately that I was complying with the request and being romantic. What I was actually doing, and she has confirmed this, I understand, from a prison cell. She has no, you know, she could have every right to hate me. I understand she's confirmed to journalists. I was a total gentleman. Anyone observing and surveilling would have thought that we were deeply in love. I never laid a finger on her because I knew it would disgrace our country and it would disgrace Maria. In that entire period that I was being instructed to romance her, I created the impression, and I, but it was all a lie. And I did that, and at the same time, I set up 
X, Y, and Z for some felony charges. Okay. I, I just have two, two quick questions for you. Um, one is, what made you realize last summer that the person who was contacting you was Peter Strzok? Well, he wasn't contacting. Let me be clear. Some, okay. some people showed up and said these instructions come and this request comes. Uh, it was things, because I had been involved, I deliberately kept, once this Russia scandal started, believe it or not, I, didn't I tried as much as I could not to follow it because I wanted to keep my own mind clear for when the investigators showed up. And we should talk about that, too. But when the investigators showed up, so my mind would be clear. So I really tried not to follow it as hard as I could. By last May or June, I mean, it became impossible, and I felt very aw awful because I knew I had these very important pieces. I actually went to see a lawyer, and the lawyer, who's a big Republican lawyer, I went to, he was all excited. I'm going to take, you know, I said, I need to come forward to somebody, help me. And he heard about five minutes of my story, and he said, Patrick, you're going to go home and you're going to keep your mouth shut. You're going to go to prison for the rest of your life if you come forward. Uh, but the next month, it was, watching, it was watching the congressional hearing ripping these guys apart mm -hmm. that the repeat, there were little details that were said that made me realize, holy cow, this guy Peter Strzok is the guy who sent these instructions. And his little details within the things that were said, and they have since confirmed to me more recently, yes, you're correct in what you okay. figured out. All right, um, last question. What do you say to folks who watch this and they say, you know, he's, he's spinning a yarn? Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, I've put everything on the line. I was warned that I'm going to be destroyed by this, that all of Washington is going to try to grind me into dust. I had to eject from the company. I had to eject. I can't bring that on the company. If you want to help me, and you, I, anyway, you go buy your daughter a pillow at Overstock.com. The entirety of Washington is going to come down on me and try to destroy me. So I had to get out of the way. That's what's happened. And well, no doubt Peter, Pe Peter Strzok would watch this and say, you know, he, he's full no, of it. I, I had nothing to do with you, anything that he's talking I can't about, wait. I would imagine. He's, I can't, he won't. I can tell you, Peter Strzok, you want to see a, a former director crap his pants? Pardon me. Go stick a, a, a uh, television camera on Peter Strzok. Or let's just say James Comey and say the name Patrick Byrne. You will see a former director of the okay. FBI crap his pants. All right. Well, we, um, we thank you for coming here tonight and telling your story. And we'll obviously follow it um, as, as it moves forward. Shop. And um, thank, thank you very much. Stock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Patrick Byrne joining us tonight. Good to see you, sir.